Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp Weekly. And in this lecture, I'm going to show you that how you can use GitHub with Xcode. Xcode does have a built-in functionality for checking in the code, comparing the code, pushing the code to the remote repositories, resolving merge conflicts and all that stuff. So we're going to look at some of the features. So I'm going to go ahead and run Xcode. Now, one of the things that you will have to do is if you go to preferences, you have to make sure that you have added your GitHub account. And if you have not added your GitHub account, you can easily do that by adding a plus key or the plus button. And this will allow you to add uh, any kind of a different account, including GitHub. And make sure that you have your uh, access token for GitHub. Uh, that is something that you will have to read about it uh, in a different uh, article or something. Uh, so when you are trying to add your GitHub account, make, make sure you have your username and also the access token, which you can generate on GitHub. So once you have added this, let me go ahead and create a project. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a new project. Oops, there we go. And we can call this project anything. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to select iOS app. And we can go ahead and select storyboard, although it doesn't really matter. And uh, we can just say over here, learning GitHub. Or you can write a different name for your project. Next, we are going to save the project on desktop. Now, I'm going to hold on over here because there is a setting over here, a check mark which is saying that create the Git repository on my Mac. So basically what you're saying is that if you have this check mark checked, then your project that you're creating, which is learning GitHub, will already be a GitHub repository. You can do that, that's perfectly fine. But since we are trying to learn from scratch, I'm just gonna uncheck that and create my project. And there we go, this is a simple, you can see Xcode Swift UI application, which consists of uh, some code that we haven't written, but this comes with a template. Now, currently, our project, which is learning GitHub, is not really under source control. Because remember the check mark? We unchecked it, right? So it's not really under source control. Um, let's go to source control. That's your Xcode menu. Uh, and say new Git repositories. And by default, you can see that it's going to select your current folder, which is learning GitHub, and it's going to give you the path of where that folder is, which looks correct. So I'm just going to say create. OK, so now this particular folder, my project, is now under GitHub. Right over there, you can see the GitHub or source control, and you can see the local changes and everything that's going on. You can also see the repository with different branches. Uh, you can see the main branch and whatnot. I mean, all of these things you can definitely see. All right, so everything is now part of GitHub. Now, if I want to change something, you can see that it's already committed. It's, uh, well, it's basically saying initial commit. That's the first commit, all right? And if I go and change some code, so let's say that if I just change this part, and I say over here, uh, learning Xcode with, or learning GitHub integration with Xcode or something, learning GitHub in Xcode, and I save it. Now, something has changed because I changed the contents of the content view. So if I go over here, uh, you can first of all see all of these things that are changing. You can see in the repository, all right? We have the same thing. So now the question is, well, how do we know that it, it's change or not. Well, we forgot to submit these things. That's the first thing. We have the folder and we have also uh, this thing which is the actual project file. So let's go ahead and commit these things. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and let's see, commit. And we can commit both of these things. And initial commit, what we can write is uh, starter project. Oops, not, there we go. Commit the files. Great. 
And I'm going to go over here, so this part is committed. So I'm now going to go ahead and change something. And as soon as I change, you can actually see the content view is now representing with M as in modified. If I click on it, and you can see this bar appearing, which is kind of telling you what has actually changed. Uh, it's telling you that it was learning before, but now it is hello GitHub and Xcode. You can toggle this from over here. You can see that. Kind of cool, right? You can also see it side by side comparison if you want to. You can see that on the left side, that is our current view. And on the right side is the old view. All right. I'm going to go ahead and say inline comparison. There we go. Now, if you don't want to see this, you can always, or if you want to discard the change, you can always discard the change. But I just don't want to see my history. Uh, I just want to see the current. All right. Now, this file is already added to the staging area. So we can always click on it and commit this. All right. We can write a nice message. What we are committing. Changing the text string in the content view and all that stuff. And we can commit the file. Everything is being committed locally right now uh, because you know it's not really hooked up to any remote server. Let's go to our source control. And what we will do, actually right over here in the repository, sorry. In the remote, you can see it's completely blank. There's nothing going on. We can always right click on it and we can say uh, new learning GitHub remote or add existing remote. If you already have something created on GitHub, you can add an existing remote, which is actually a common operation. I mean, you have a placeholder, uh, so you can do that. You can also create a new remote. You can see account, account owner, some sort of a description, whether it will be public or private, that's kind of up to you. I'm just going to make it private. And now we have a repository, repository name learning GitHub, and I can go ahead and create it. If it's available under my name, it will be given to me. Great. So now we have added the origin. And I can always go to source control and now push also. You can see that it's going to tell me that it's going to be pushing on the origin, which is our remote, and the main branch. Let's go ahead and push it. And it should be pushed. So now we can go to the remote and check it out that if it has been pushed or not. So let me go ahead and open up a new browser. I'm going to drag it here and go to GitHub. And I think we called it what? Learning GitHub or something. So let's see if we can find Learning GitHub. There we go. We found it. And there we go. Changing the text string, initial commit, all of these things are already there. So that's pretty cool, right? Now let's say that if I'm working on something else, maybe I'm trying to work on the detail screen. So let's go ahead and add a detail view. That can be a Swift UI view. I'm going to go ahead and add a detail view. Okay. So on my master branch or on our main branch, we already have a detail view, but I'm like, okay, well, you know what? I'll be writing a lot of code in the detail view and I don't really want to disturb the master branch. I shouldn't even have added detail view in the master branch, but now at least I remembered and it would be a good idea to create a branch of the master. So you click on the main and you say, you create a new branch from main, main master, whatever you're using. And now you can actually say whatever, detail view branch. So maybe this branch is about the detail view and the work that you will do on the detail view. It's also going to tell you that you are currently on the detail view branch. Okay, so that's great. This means that every single thing I'm going to do right now, it will happen on the detail view. So let's go ahead and do some stuff. I'm not going to do much. Uh, just going to add this and I'm just going to say detail view. Great. You can see that my changes, uh, I've done a couple of different changes. So I would be interested in committing these changes. Let's do a commit. And we'll commit everything. And we will say added detail view. Okay. 
Now, one of the other things that you would like to do is once you are done with the detail view, you probably want to merge the changes of the detail view to the main branch. All right, so if I go ahead and you can see, it's saying that merge the main into detail view. And the reason it's saying merge into detail view is that currently our detail view branch is the one that is checked out. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that if I can check out my main branch, there we go. And now on the main branch, I can go ahead and click on any of the other branches and say merge detail view into main. This means that whatever things that we did in the detail view, which is I think we just wrote one line of code saying detail view, that will be now available on the main branch also. And there we go. So everything now should be available on the main branch. We are currently on the main branch and you can see that now the changes from the detail view are available over here. Pretty cool, right? And that's it. That is how you will use. I mean, I know that there are other, a lot of different actions you can use with uh, GitHub, uh, like stashing and also, also like merge conflicts and all that stuff. We will take a look at that maybe later on, but hopefully this video is going to introduce you to how you can use GitHub uh, right there in your Xcode. Hey, if you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my brand new book, Surviving the Coding Bootcamp. Now, this book is not only about the people who are attending bootcamp or a coding bootcamp. This is for everyone. So if you're a self-taught developer and you want to learn a lot of different techniques, then this is a great book for you. Apart from my book, you can also go ahead and check out my courses on Udemy. You can see that I have a lot of different courses uh, from server-driven UI to MVVM design pattern, combined Mac OS, testament development, Swift UI, Rx Swift. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. I'm always working for on new courses also. So check out the links in the YouTube description. And once again, thank you so much for supporting my work.